Welcome to Introduction to Logic, Unit 2, Lecture 2, Part 2. In this lecture, we'll learn about Venn diagrams, which will be a handy tool for visualizing the logic of categorical propositions. In Part 1 of this lecture, we learned about the four categorical propositions, the universal affirmative, all SRP, the universal negative, no SRP, the particular affirmative, some SRP, and, of course, the particular negative. Some s are not p. We also learned about the concept of distribution, which refers to any term in a categorical proposition that includes the whole class of things. Next, we're going to learn about Venn diagrams, which allow us to visualize the logic of categorical propositions. We begin with two overlapping circles, representing the subject and predicate classes of any categorical proposition. The circle representing the subject is always on the left, and the one representing the predicate is always on the right. Note that when we overlap the circles, we create a new set represented in region 2 as the set of things that are members of both the subject and predicate classes. Now that we have the three domains, we can indicate on the diagram the information asserted in the proposition. If we need to eliminate an area, we simply shade it out. This demonstrates that things exist only in region 2 and 3. Nothing is left in region 1. It's been completely wiped out. It's been erased. Similarly, we could eliminate region 2 by shading it. This would demonstrate that the only things that exist are in regions 1 and 3. Now, let's apply shading to indicate the meaning of an A proposition. This proposition tells us that every existing member of the subject class is also a member of the predicate class. Thus, there can be no non-predicate subjects. By shading out region 1, essentially eliminating everything from that region, we demonstrate the meaning of the A proposition. Every remaining member of the subject class is also a member of the predicate class. Now let's try the same thing for the universal negative. It asserts that there are no members in common between the subject and predicate classes, no S, R, P. This is indicated on the diagram by shading out region 2. Now we can see that none of the members of the subject class are also members of the predicate class, which is exactly what no S, R, P means. When it comes to the particular affirmative and particular negative propositions, we have to treat our diagrams a little bit differently. Shading is fine for universal claims, but since shading eliminates everything in a region, it's not going to work for a particular claim. A particular claim asserts the existence of some things, which we've learned means at least one thing. We'll adopt a convention. We'll use an X to mark the existence of at least one thing. For example, if we wanted to show that there was one member of the subject class that was excluded from the predicate class, we'd put an X in region 1. Note that regions 2 and 3, since they don't have an X in them, remain ambiguous as to membership. Maybe there are things in region 2 and 3. Then again, maybe not. What we do know is that there's at least one thing in region 1. If we wanted to indicate the existence of one thing that is in both sets, we'd put an X in region 2. Similarly, if we wanted to indicate the existence of something that existed in the predicate class that was completely separate from the subject class, we'd put an X in region 3. Now, let's think about the particular affirmative statement. It says there exists at least one thing that is a member of both the subject and predicate class, some s, r, p. To demonstrate this, we place an x in region 2. This diagram shows that some s, r, p. There's at least one member of s that's also a member of p. When it comes to the particular negative, we'll want to demonstrate on the diagram the existence of at least one thing that is a member of the subject class but not a member of the predicate class. Placing an x in region 1 will make this clear there is at least one s that is not p. Now we know 
how to make Venn diagrams for each of our four categorical propositions. The universal affirmative, the universal negative, the particular affirmative, and the particular negative. A, E, I, and O. There's one final thing to note about the regions of categorical propositions. We've learned about regions 1, 2, and 3. This exa exhausts all the areas within the two domains of the subject and predicate. But what about everything that's outside of S&P? That is, suppose we wanted to say something about everything that is neither part of the subject or the predicate class. For that, we'd need another region. As a convention, we adopt adding a universal domain, a rectangle, that includes both the subject and the predicate. It also indicates everything that is outside of the subject and predicate. We could think of region 4 as the universe, the set of everything that exists. Region 4 helps us to indicate everything that is non-S and everything that is non-P, that is, everything else in the universe beyond S and P. Now, for our purposes, we're not going to be worrying about Region 4, but I wanted to show it to you simply so that you know, and it can be an important part of working with Venn diagrams if we wanted to think a little bit more complexly. But we are going to focus on Regions 1, 2, and 3. So that's all for now. We'll see you next time.